I want to get to the border to uh, talk about the situation that's developing right now. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas says that the U.S. is on track to see more migrants at our southern border than we've seen in the last 20 years, describing the situation at the border not as a crisis, but as, quote, difficult. That's what they're now calling it. And joining us now for more on this is retired captain of the Texas Department of Public Safety. Jason Jones is live at the border this morning. Jason, good morning. Nice to see you again. Good morning. Good to be with you this morning. Um, so tell us about the situation right now. I understand that you're in Roma, Texas. The Rio Grande, is, Grande is, River is right behind you there. Um, what's the situation like where you are? Set the scene for us. What are you seeing that we're not reading about in the New York Times? Yeah, sure. Uh, Roma, Texas lies between McAllen and Laredo, Texas. Now behind me here is a small community of Miguel Aleman, Mexico. Um, and the, what you can see in the background is a port of entry, which uh, allows people to cross both sides of that river. But the reason we're in Roma is not because of just the migrant crisis that's happening. This area is one of the most violent upon the entire southwest border. Right. And the reason for that is because on the Mexico side here in this community of Miguel Aleman, mm -hmm. Cartel del Noreste, known as uh, the Los Zetas, and Cartel de Gafo, known as CDG, or the Gulf Cartel, have been at war here for two years. So that violence crosses over very often. Now, migrants have been crossing here uh, for some time. Now, we've been on the ground for, uh, I guess, about the last two nights. Night before last, uh, Border Patrol apprehended over 200 migrant families. Last night, so far, the numbers that we've looked at are close to 100 that we've personally seen. Then some video that we've been able to get. But one of the things that's really interesting to me is to really watch as Border Patrol is forced to go from border security to migrant care. We watched that real time right. uh, yesterday. And what you see then is where the state police, National Guard and other assets then have to come in and help protect the border while they are just concentrating on the migrants. We're, uh, we're showing some of the video that you uh, sent us, this exclusive video. Uh, it's just unbelievable to see the situation there. And this is, uh, I'm just gonna ask you, have you seen anything out of the ordinary happen while you've been out there for us uh, waiting for this segment this morning? Oh yeah, just right here behind us, just under the port of entry. Uh, it's very common to see rafts crossing underneath the port. And we just had one, we had a Texas Highway Patrolman walk up there right before we went live, because they had one that just crossed. So. I don't know if they've been able to apprehend anyone or anything yet, but it's very common here. Uh, every bend in the river is what the cartels will tell you is a gate. Wow. And so when there's no law enforcement in the area, they will surge and push commodities. Now, it's hard to believe that they treat people as a commodity, but they truly do. And I don't know if you can see this or not. This is a great example. Uh, this is a wristband yep. that migrants are given by the cartels. And that is after they pay the peso. And there are many of these down here They've got certain markings on them, which identify the actual smuggling organization that right. uh, has moved them across. But then also that they have paid the peso or the tax to the cartel. Uh, your average Mexican citizen just across this river is paying $2,500. If you're a Central American, you're paying $3,000. If you're Chinese, you pay $5,000. But if you're Russian or Middle Eastern, it's nine grand just to pass over this river. And they've caught people from Yemen, Iran, Turkey. Four people on terrorist watch lists have been apprehended. Um, it's great that we caught them, but it makes you wonder how many have gotten through these borders that haven't been this poor in more than 20 years. Earlier this week uh, and last week, the administration said this was the worst we've seen in five years. Then it was 10. Alejandro Mayorkas yesterday said this is the worst we've seen in 20 years. You've been in Texas all your life. How bad is it? It's bad, but I will tell you, it's going to get worse. Whenever you see the summer months kick in, that's when migration patterns really increase. So the real challenge we have is just seeing the sheer numbers already for the month of February at over 100,000 apprehensions by CBP. It's a great forecaster or tripwire of what is about to come and how Texas and the rest of our country is going to be affected. And I just want to say one thing on that. Yeah. Migration is what we're always talking about. But what is seen here specifically is fentanyl, it's methamphetamine, it is, it is these killer drugs that are surging into the U.S. affecting every American. And when we're averaging, you know, about 81,000 overdose deaths, according to CDC, wow. border security truly is national security. And what's happening here affects this country and every American. And so, you know, migration is a great one layer we talk about. 
But we can't forget all the others of drug trafficking and human trafficking and human smuggling, et cetera, that's going on down here. This, this very well could develop into a, uh, a generational crisis down there on our southern border. What do you think is the, the impetus, the cause of this surge? Do you think that it's just these people are aware that Joe Biden's in the Oval Office now and that is a green light to come to the border and come into the U.S.? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Perception drives migration. I mean, we know this. I mean, if you look back to the unaccompanied alien children surge in 2014, the issues that were happening in 2019 before President Trump instilled migration protection protocols in Title 42 because of COVID, you know, that drove the numbers way down. But right. prior to that, we had some serious problems in 2019. So the message has been sent around the world and the world has heard and they are coming. And I will say it right now, Rob, we're going to see some things this year that we've never seen in migration patterns. And the big one to watch for in the next six to eight weeks is all the special interest aliens. Those are people who come from a country with a terrorism nexus uh, that are surging at the Darien Gap near Columbia right now. They'll start arriving here in about six to eight weeks. So you'll see uh, a real change in who is crossing from Mexican citizens and Central Americans to the world, basically. It scares me, too. We're out of time, but just to hear that that, that Middle Eastern terrorists are, are traveling here to exploit this crisis, you know, we're not far away from the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks, and any time I hear that terrorists from the Middle East are, are, are trying to get into the country, you know, my my alarm bells go off, and uh, it's, it's scary to think about. Uh, Jason, we appreciate you uh, coming on with us this morning and sharing that video with us. Uh, unbelievable to see. Stay in touch. I'd love to have you back on soon. Thanks for having us. All right. Thank you again. That is uh, Jason. We appreciate